Let's get it started then, Pozo Training Diaries 2014. The comp has just been confirmed, so it's all good news. Less than uh, a month, about three and a half weeks until the competition starts, and we should see the pros flooding into Pozo to get that practice in. But I wouldn't get here just yet, boys, because the wind conditions at the moment are not looking good. From next week, probably about six days from now, I think the forecast does look a lot better. The wind comes back and the waves are building as a good period. Period. So uh, we are going to have some really good action in probably just over a week. The footage I'm going to show you here on the diaries is from pretty much a week ago now. We had three days of wind. We had not many waves for the first few days. Then we had one way, uh, one day where the, where the waves sort of picked up and it was really good sailing. We also sailed on a spot just near the airport, but more than that on the next diaries. So who's in this one? I told you who's in this one. That's who we're going to talk about first. We'll come to Costa in a minute, but I've got some sick footage of Costa. Uh, Victor Fernandez. I haven't got much footage of him, uh, but he was sailing really good. Saw him getting some nice doubles, nice and clean, Victor style, uh, nice tail top forward, uh, and looked uh, pretty keyed up. And I've actually seen him wearing an impact vest more recently. So he's, uh, he's obviously got things on his mind he wants to be practicing, which he's going to land pretty hard because Victor doesn't usually land hard. So he's obviously got things on his mind he wants to be practicing. In. And in saying that, there's been a few other people wearing the impact vest. I know I was wearing one a lot last year. Albert Pigeon, I saw him the other day with the massive, like old World Cup style one. It looked pretty hefty. Uh, Bruce, I've seen him wearing one and actually talking to Bruce. Bruce and Lewis, actually, we should mention Lewis and Bruce or Bruce and Lewis next to each other. It's like uh, Batman and Rob, actually, it's more like uh, Robson and Jerome or something like Laurel and Hardy, them boys. But I filmed them the other day. They've got these impact uh, pants to protect the nuggets from uh, ending up like like here <laughs> so they've got these big pants and they obviously just chucked them in the same bit and they were trying to work out whose was whose <laughs> never a good job when you're trying to work out whose pants are whose bruce finally worked it out in the end though Smells like my pee. <laughs> it's the only way to do it obviously bruce knows his own smell i wouldn't want to i, I think that actually he said later they got the wrong ones anyway so those boys all padding up uh let's let's talk about bruce and lewis like i said those boys have really been pushing each other uh, and we'll go through a few of the moves and who's leading who we start with the doubles and I have to say, it's advantage Lewis at the moment. He's still getting the odd one, which doesn't quite go right. But I would say on a whole, 80%, 70%, he's landing really nice and, and getting some you know, solid rotation. Uh, he's still not up with the likes of Ricardo, Victor and Costa and these boys. But he's definitely in that next group of doublers where pretty consistent, but the odd one can go wrong. Bruce. He's getting the odd one, don't get me wrong, but I haven't seen him land as many as Lewis. I haven't seen him maybe attempting as many. So he had a different idea. He's going to approach it somewhere a little bit different. He thought, I'm going to go a little bit more stalled. So he went a little bit more stalled. It didn't end good, I tell you. <laughs> he seemed quite confident, but I want to watch him back on the video. I can see why he's got those impact pants on, I tell you. So uh, I would say advantage Lewis in the doubles. Back loops, one-handed back loops. Lewis is absolute king, landing really nice. One hand off, like super stylish. But Bruce, he's took it obviously the next level. He's doing the one hand, one foot. He's been doing it for a few years now and just looks super comfortable. So I'd say on the back loops, advantage Bruce. Tweak push loops. I didn't see Lewis do any, so it's advantage Bruce on the tweak push sleeves. Good tweak push sleeves from Bruce as usual. Uh, what else have we got? The Wave 360. Now, Bruce, renowned for his Wave 360s. You wouldn't have thought Lewis could take him, but I tell you what, Lewis is absolutely pumping out the Wave 360s, so I would say it's pretty close. Danny's got all the different styles of doing them, I know that, but Adam, every time I saw him, he'd be landing one. So uh, those boys are really pushing each other at the moment. It's really good to see, and I think their level is definitely going up. Bruce didn't have such a good year on tour last year. It's going to be interesting to see how he does this year uh, and how he works out with that lower seed, because he could really upset a few people. Um, that is going to be interesting, like I've said before, but more on that as we get closer to the competition. Okay, come on, let's talk about Costa. He's the man, isn't he? He was six last year, so maybe everyone thinks, oh, he won world champion, but he is definitely the one to watch here in Pozo. He has the moves. Uh, going out the other day, just 
you know, full plane in tweet push loop, lands straight off the next ramp, one footed sort of double kick backy, just looks super comfortable. He's got like the backside grubby, air backside grubby, just takes off. He didn't land the one I had, but I saw him get a really nice one. Just looks sick. If you can pull that off in a comp, that is super high level. Um, he also does the one where he sort of doesn't rotate at all, but he does everything apart from rotate, lands on the nose and then just slides back. Uh, just looks really good. He's got the, you know, nose down, Jackers. But this is what I've got to show you. This was funny. He turns up in the van. He's got about three or four boards to test. Apparently, Starboard gave him some boards, some carbon ones to test the construction, see if they're up to his sort of level. He's been using the wood ones. I think there's a bit more flex and he gets away with a lot more. So he took the carbon ones out. First run, just managed to catch him as he took off for his first, you know, move to test out these boards. Whoom, whoom, just massive double ah. forward lands. <laughs> absolutely ping. Da -ding. A bit too ping because he comes straight back up the beach, board down the middle, broken. Walks straight back to the van, sort of plods back to the van, like, oh yeah, that's not so good. Gets another board, takes his time, gets it out. First run, goes over the first wave, you know, not such a good wave. Even the next wave wasn't so good, but it just launches. Perfect double land. Ping. Me and Pons, Pons from Pozo Wins does the coaching there, was actually filming, doing a bit of coaching for Alish at the time. Uh, and he was like, Jesus. He said he's testing construction. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> and that was it. Walks back up the beach, another one gone. It wasn't long before he was packing his bags and going back to Vargas, I think, to go and get his wooden one. So that is Costa at the moment. He is just pushing, he's trying jumps on the way in, he's maybe practicing his starboard tack, he's doing cheese rolls, he's doing the old cheese roll back loop or attempting it. So Costa, he looks fired up and he looks super comfortable. Be in, I, I can't see anything else apart from a first place of Pozo. That may be loads of pressure, but I doubt it because I think that's what everyone is thinking anyway. Uh, what else is going on? We've got a few random stars out there. I did capture a few guys. Uh, I don't know the names, I apologise, but there's a few boys, so just going to use this bit to just put in a few random dudes, uh, maybe making some moves, maybe doing some crashes. There was one guy come off the wave, the board flips over just funny. Uh, a couple of guys making some nice backies, there's a dude in a helmet making nice backies. So yeah, that's my sort of random stars collection there from uh, what we've seen already. We've got bunker cam going. There was one dude, he just crawling up the bunker at the top of the sails out so uh the bunker is still catching people out we got bruce this was a random moment we got him at the bunker and he's sailing along and he just suddenly as if you see something in the water just let's go of his kit and the kit just flies off and i was trying we were trying to rack in our brain trying to think what happened we came to the conclusion maybe the harness line just come unhooked from the harness and uh he just couldn't hold it and it just pinged out so uh that's what's going on at the moment. Bruce obviously using a three-band sail. Another guy we've seen in the water uh, using a three-band sail, Albert Pigeon. He's got the new uh, Severn three-band. So that was interesting to see. It was his first. He was sort of testing it, see what he thought of it, giving feedback. And he had a bit of a hell run. There wasn't much waves. And I was like, oh, it's rubbish. There's no point going out. Albert went out. Three nice jumps on one run. He was like, yeah, don't mind this sail. It's actually pretty good. So uh, good to see Albert uh, tearing it up. Uh, we've got the stop forwards. I don't know if you know about this. We were talking about doubles before, but the top guys, and I'm talking the top double forward guys like Ricardo, Costa, Victor, they've all got this in their bag, you know, Brasinho, where they can do the double and they can stop the rotation. So they do one and they think, nah, I haven't got enough wind, and they just pull the kit to the side and just stop the double and land full plane in. Not an easy move to do. You think you can do it, and I've done it a few times. I know most people have done it a few times, but these boys do it every time. I saw Lewis not quite do it. I think I saw Bruce not quite do it, and it's, you do land hard when you get it wrong. So those stop forwards, if you ever want to do doubles, if you can learn to do these stop forwards, I think that is some technique in doing doubles where the way you do them, you should be able to stop after one rotation if you haven't got enough power. Just an observation, we'll see. Uh, the young guys. There's a lot of young guys obviously here and they're getting older, so maybe they're not so young anymore and I'm definitely getting older. But Pablito, we've seen him, he's sailing really good, he's got some nice backside shackers, he's getting some nice like arch sort of back, head sort of throw, backies, uh, even going through a few doubles. Uh, Romero, he was sort of training with him a little bit, so I saw him go for a double, he was getting some nice shackers. So those boys look like uh, they're, they're, they're coming on. It's going to be, like I said, the comp's coming up in three and a half weeks. We get some wind, I think there's going to be a lot of action on the water. 
Uh, Moritz Mauck, I talked about him before, but he's got a really nice backside sort of grubby. There's not many people doing this, uh, and he does it very consistently. I only caught the end of the one the other day, uh, and he was going for some nice goiters, no hand. He even tried that new move from Mussolini, where you go into a frontside 360 and you sort of go back on yourself uh, like a freestyle move. Didn't make it, but you know he's going for that sort of stuff. So those boys are definitely pushing. Um, what about me? Well, yes. I, <laughs> I won't lie to you, I haven't been sailing that much because I was trying to film and I didn't realise the wind was going to drop. So we got a bit of footage of me. Uh, I slowly kind of creep my way into it. I was trying to get some nice uh, planing forwards just to get my doubles. I had sort of four runs, did four doubles, but uh, our cameraman at the time, Ozzy Adam, who's gone home now, more about him in a minute, um, it didn't catch him all, but he got the first two. and. They're not great, I won't lie to you. They look, after seeing Costas, it's actually embarrassing seeing them. But I did slow-mo my one down next to Costas and I looked at the rotation and position of my body and everything in the air. It's exactly the same. There's one little thing missing, height. Costa is a mast higher than where I am when I land in the water like a sack of shit. And he's still up there, just nice and controlled. So I have a feeling I might need to go higher. Yes, I know, whatever, we'll see. I keep saying this every year. I think I've been saying this since I started. So we'll see. Anyway, that's more to the, uh, the tweet push tubes. They started off a bit ropey. They're getting better. We just need some more time. So uh, more training for me. I even caused someone to crash and I'm sorry. I have to apologize. I'm going to say it now. I am sorry. I was coming out. I wanted to double. It was like the wave. It was on the small day and I didn't find a wave all day. And I was just thinking, and there's guys right there. So I sort of put my hand up like, oh, and I think he thought I was sort of shouting at him or do something. And he lost his concentration and just stacked it in front of me. I was like, I felt so bad afterwards. So uh, whoever you are, I'm sorry. My fault. Uh, I'll get you a beer. You just find me, just find me. Uh, so that's what I've been doing. I've been making people crash. Never a good thing to do. Um, so that's pretty much it from the, from the round, round one of the training diaries. It's all, like I said, it's supported by Pozo Wind. So if you are coming to Pozo, I suggest you don't come in the next week. After the next week, I reckon we're back to normal. It's going to be firing. So give those guys a ring. Go on the website. It's www posowinds.com get on there and they do like i said they do everything they do transfers from the airport accommodation they do all that stuff Jonas is the man they've obviously got other people working in the shop they even do sale repairs they've got everything more on that shop coming up but they are the guys to speak to uh, and that's it like i said i'm going to turkmenistan to do the slalom commentary in nine days so i'm hoping we get some wind before this nine days and i can maybe make the, make the next one in turkmenistan so that should be interesting if you want to buy me a beer because you know you, i know you think oh what a lazy bugger i'm not buying him a beer but if everyone bought me a half it would make a big difference so you can follow the link up there if you want to buy me a beer. if not don't worry just keep watching for free it's not a problem i'm pretty easy going all right cheers boys thanks for tuning in and uh, stay tuned to the next one because the next one is going to be footage from near the airport and I, it's definitely not like Pozo it's a bit more like Tenerife up there so it could be quite interesting maybe not the big doubles you expected but there's a few wave moves and a few nice stuff going on so stay tuned to that one and we'll speak to you then oh.